clear, confusing game. This is going to be about, I almost said the backgammon assignment. Boy, that would have, yeah, that would have been, you know, backgammon. No, this will be about the blackjack assignment. So what I'd like you to do is, is um, the design was assigned and it's due, I think, tomorrow. Um, and you all have had some chance to think about it and all that. And maybe you've done some coding. What I'd like you to all, uh, each to do is volunteer some things that you find clear and some things that you find confusing about the assignment. Now, unless you have turned it in and have uploaded it to the Google Play Store and already have 5,000 downloads, I'm sure there's part of it that you don't 100% understand. And I'm sure there's also parts of it that you understand better than others. So these are relative terms. So even if you're confused about a lot or you're clear about a lot, please give me something in both categories. So let's go first. Clear, confusing. Yes. Clear, linking visual components to objects. Confusing. Um, okay, confusing is looking for built-in methods. We'll we'll call we'll call it that. I think that's what you mean. In other words, is it something that is part of Android? Is it something that's part of the API? All right, fair enough. The paper is showing up upside down in the screen. Well, you, someone should have saved that for something they're confused about, right? I can't read anything you're writing. Okay, what is that? That is image rotation. There we go. All right, anyone else care to volunteer something? Clear or confusing? Okay. All right. Oh, you mean you mean literally like like overlaying the screen. Okay. Overlay message on screen. So so you don't want you don't want there to be like a slot on the top of it that says win. You want it to smack that in the middle of the screen. You won, yay, you know, or whatever. Maybe not the yay part, but maybe. Anyone else? This is where I show the picture again of the guy that is going to wait. I was just thinking that. Remember, this is my this is my Friday, so got none but time. Yes. Okay. Inflating. Okay. Yes. Okay.
That's not a question. Okay. 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 What changes the integer value? Well, Java doesn't change the values of integers. An instruction in Java may change the value in integers, and which would beg the question then, it's probably not the right instruction. <laughs> right? I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult here. I'm just trying to get a, a sense for that. Uh, the process. Okay. Uh, do you have a, uh, maybe we can just discuss that question um, directly um, and, and you can pose that. So we'll, we'll put in leading zeros. The reason I'm thinking of that is I'm not really sure what that's relevant for in this particular example, but what it will be a good example of will be like troubleshooting, how you can go and um, troubleshoot um, a situation, you know, because Pardon me? Sure. All right. So we'll try. We'll try that. We'll try. Uh, we'll try that at some point today. Other clear or fuzzy. Android error messages. Do you have a for instance? Okay, I will, we'll have to plug in and take a look at that because I'm not sure what, what you mean, but we can, we can try. Okay. What happens when you click on the yellow ones? Does, do you see anything or are they warnings perhaps? Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll try. We'll, we'll try to recreate that. Um, if I can't recreate that, that will be something that um, maybe we can look at individually. If you have an example of it. Anyone else? Yes. I don't even know if I could answer that, and I'm the one that did that. Um, <laughs> um, now, now you said the spinner and button listeners you said are straightforward, right? Okay, so we'll add spinner and button listeners again here, and getting the card the right size. Um, I, I will tell you the process that I went through, but. I, I was banging my head against the wall on that one because I could not figure out why it was doing it. And in fact, my memory was that when I wrote, because I took and I adapted this. I actually took ch a chunk of code to, to make the dealing program. I took a chunk of code out of another program and made that. And in the original program, the card was sized just fine. So I, no, I had no idea what broke it. And it took, it was a pain to figure out what fixed it, but I can tell you what fixed it. Anyone else? Yes. The quiz is so easy that I'm ashamed to call it a quiz. Don't stress over it. Now, I know. That's like the dentist telling you it's not going to hurt and not worry about it, right? You got to take that with a grain of salt. But really, um, the, the quiz, you know, the, the quiz is, you know, intended to be like batting practice, all right? There's three questions. Short answer. There's, there's three questions. There's short answers. 
Um, two of the questions are worth two points and one of the questions is worth one point, if I remember right, or something like that. All right, and yeah, the, 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 it's very, very, very straightforward. It's meant to be. Um, did you have something to volunteer for either straightforward, clear, or confusing? Everything's confusing, okay. Well, again, we can, okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's, that's a good one. Because that really is just, that's writing an algorithm, right? That's just writing an algorithm and how to write it in Java and all that. All right, first of all, we're going to go through, and is there anyone who is confused about any of these clear things, which are largely the button listeners and linking visual components to objects? Anyone have questions over those? So let's start at the confusing one. And let's start, we'll, we'll try to cover, we'll try to cover as many of these things as possible. And I'll, I'm going to pick them in the order, in just some order that makes sense to me. All right? I can't promise it'll make sense to everyone. The ace. How do you handle the ace? Yes. Was well, that rhetorical? <laughs> no, that was not rhetorical. How are we going to handle the ace? Okay. What well, if you have more than one ace in your hand? No, they don't have to be ones. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to write the Java code, but we can, we can sketch it out, and then maybe if you have specific questions about how to do something in Java, we can, we can do it. All right. Uh, would it take its own method for aces? Maybe. All right. Let's start out with the most fundamental thing that we can start out with, right? And that is what is the is is to talk about what methods we're going to have involved here. Method or methods, because we might end up with more than one method, or we might just have one method. I'm going to start off. I'm going to say I'm going to have a method that um, evaluates a hand that tells me the value of a hand. That makes sense, right? I'm going to need that method somewhere, right? I'm going to need that method actually in a couple of places. I'm going to need that method to see if they busted. I'm going to need that method at the end of the game to see who won. So that's a method I'm going to need to be able to look at a collection of cards and determine, yes, they're over 21, or the value is 20, or whatever. So I'm going to call that method public evaluate hand now signature that method what are the arguments of that method and what is it going to return we'll start with what I think is easy what's it going to return okay I'm looking at the value of the cards. An int, right. So this method is going to return an integer. All right. And what am I going to give this method? I'm going to evaluate the whole hand, not just a single card.
Okay? It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be cards, and it'll be an array list of cards. All right? Because if we think about it, you know, array lists are the way to go when you're talking about something that can have a variable number of elements in it. Right? Because an array list, you know, think of a blackjack hand. It could have two cards in it. It could have five cards in it, whatever. So we're going to get an array list of cards... And we're going to call it arg cards. So that's going to get passed into this. So this function, and again, it's very important when you're designing, that's what you want to do. All right? Is your first step is to look at and say, what am I going to give this? What, you know, what method do I have? What am I going to give this method? And what's it going to return? Then it's good to have sort of an idea of what's going to go on in here. All right? Um, I will say that what I'm going to do next, I'm going to start the value of the hand, I'm going to initialize it to zero, right? Because before we have started looking at the hand, their hand is worth zero points. All right? Question, comment? Could I do two values? Well, remember, a function can't return two values. Okay. So did you answer your own question or do you still have a question? Couldn't what be done that way? And, and again, I'm not sure what your question Well, again, let's... let's I, I'm not 100% understanding your question. Let, let me try to explain it, and then we'll go from there. Could you call the method twice and somehow tell it evaluate aces as 11, evaluate aces as 1? Yeah, you probably could. Um, can this return two values? No. It, it can return one of something. Now, I could make another class which was hand values or something and return a set of values, but that doesn't seem right. I'm reasonably sure that if I want to say the value of a hand in blackjack, it's going to be the value closest to 21 without going over, given that that's the, 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 the purpose of it. And I think I want this routine to decide on the hand, the value of the hand, the single value of the hand. Let me give you a for instance. Let's say I have two aces. Well, I've got to do my math in my head. Two aces and a nine. All right? That's either 11 or 21. It would never be to a player's advantage to count that as 11. All right? There's never a time which 11 for that hand is what the player would want it to be counted as. So for all intents and purposes, I can call that 21. All right? Same thing, two aces and a seven. That is, why am I so bad at math today? 19, right. All right? So there's no situation where, yeah, I want that, that, that that's that, but I want it to be a nine. Now, you might want it to be nine and ask for another hit. I don't know why, because that's a pretty good hand, but you could ask for another hit. At that point, if you got a 10, then you want those three cards to be a nine and your whole hand to be that. So I guess what I'm going to say is, given the rules of blackjack, I think it's safe to say that a hand has one value that's the value closest to 21 without going over. So I don't think we need to return two values. In other words, this function here is going to be the guy responsible for handling the aces. All right? And this guy is going to be smart enough to do that. All right, so how are we going to, if you had to do this by hand, and let's forget, let, let's forget about aces being, let, let's just say aces are 11, all right? If you were doing this by hand, and I got my deck, I spent a good 250 on this, I want to get advantage of it, take advantage of it. If your job 
was to tell me the value of a hand. And again, forgetting that aces are worth 11, or forgetting that aces can be worth 1, what would you do? You'd say this, what's that worth? That's worth a 9. What's that worth? That's worth a 6. So that's 15. What's that worth? It's worth a 5. Therefore, this hand's worth 20. All right, let's put some more cards out here. Let's say I have... Okay, let's say I have this. Actually, let me, let me be devious here and switch these around. If we forget that a, an ace can also be worth one, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, that's 11, that's 21. First of all, why did you take a hit if you had 21? But let's, all right. That's 11, that's 20, that's 30. But wait, they have an ace. So if I just added it up, I'd get a value of 30. But that's not the final valuation. That's the valuation if I only consider an ace as having a value of 1. All right? If it doesn't have a value of, of, of if I'm over 21, like if I only had these two cards, Fine, an ace is 11. That has a value of 20. But in this case, I've gone over 21. So I don't want that ace to be 11. I want that ace to be what? I want it to be 1. So what's the value of this hand? The value of this hand would be 21. Let's make it even... Wait a minute. 20. All right, 20. Because 1, 10, 20. Let's make it even worse. Let's say I have this. All right. If I were going in and adding this up, irrespective of the ace being 1 or 11, just always counting it as 11, this would be 11, 22. That's right, right? Yeah, 11, 22, 31, 41. All right. I am over 21, right? So but I have aces. So for each ace, I can do what? I can make it 11. I'm sorry, instead of 11, I can make it 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 10 for this, 10 for this, and I end up with 21. So here's a general idea of the scheme that I'm going to have. I'm going to loop through all my cards for i equals 0, i less than, your array list, size, whatever. I'm going to ask, we have a method to ask what's the value of this card. And that method is going to assume the value of the card for 2 through 10s. Jack, king, and queen are going to be 10s. And aces are going to be 11. So first pass through, I'm going to make aces 11. I'm then going to look to see if they're over 21. They're not over 21, fine. I leave the ace at 11. If they're over 21, I'm going to look at how many aces they have. And then I'm going to subtract 10 times the number of aces they've had. So let's write out the algorithm for that. And then let's go run through some scenarios where we play the computer. Okay? So I'm not going to use full Java syntax, but again, we'll, we'll do that. For int i equals 0, i less than arg cards dot size, i plus plus. All right. That is the structure that is going to go and loop through 
each card in my list. All right? I'm going to create another method over here. That's called evaluate card. That accepts as an argument not a collection of cards, but a single card. And it's going to have a big old if statement here that's going to look at if arg card get name equals two. Val equals to if arg card get name equals three, val equals three. Finally, if arg card get name equals king, value equals ten. And if arg card get name equal ace, value equals 11, then I'm going to return the value. So I'm going to do that simply to make this method cleaner. All right, I'm going to break it up so that the valuation of the actual cards in one method, the valuation of the whole hands in another method. So I'm going to say then value equals value plus evaluate card and I'm going to pass it arg cards get i. I'm going to give it the next card in the array list. Remember, an array list is a collection of elements. In this case, it's a, a collection of card elements. So how do I get an element from a list? I use the get method. I is the subscript, it's a position in the list. So each time through the list, I'm incrementing I by one, so I'll look at the first, the second, the third, the fourth card, and each time I'm going to call the... Um, call the evaluate card method and give it the next card in the list. So let's say, um, let's say that the first card's a 10. I'm going to call evaluate card and I'm going to give it a 10. It's going to come back and say the value is a 10 and I'm going to add it to the value. All right. Now, I'm going to do a second thing here. What do you think I'm going to do besides that? Nope. Because I don't want to I, I don't want to do my checking until I'm all done. Right? Because what if the first two cards were aces? Or what if the first card was an ace, the second card was a ten, and then the third card was a ten. Alright? That third card, if I'm evaluating the cards one at a time, I'm going to look at that third card and say, that's a 10, that's not an ace. So I'm not going to do the decrementing. I'm going to wait until I'm done tallying everything up, and then I'm going to look to see how many aces I had. So what do I do when I'm examining each card? I am simply going to keep track of the number of aces, so I can use it later. So we have another variable up here, int aces equals zero. I'm going to see if arg cards get i get name or something like that equals ace then aces equal aces plus one. So I'm going to keep track of how many aces I have in my hand. And I'm going to count them as 11.
So at this point, I have the value of the hand, assuming aces And I also have the number of aces. If it's less than or equal to 21, I don't have to worry. I only have to worry if it's greater than 21. right? Because no matter how many aces they had, if the value is less than 21, I'm still okay. So I'm going to have code in here that says... If value is greater than 21, all right, and if they don't have any aces and the value is over 21, I'm also sunk, right? There's nothing I can do, or we're just over 21. So, if the value is greater than 21 and aces are greater than 0, then value equals adjust aces. I'm going to call another function. And what am I going to give that function? I'm going to give the value and I'm going to give it how many aces? Why am I doing what? I care anymore because the ace being counted as 11, it might be what put them over 21. Right? So, for example, again, an ace can either be 11 or, or 1. So if I have this, If I have this, if I count that as 11, that's 11, 21, 27. All right, so they're over 21. But, since they have an eighth, I can count that as a 1, and they actually have 17. So I need to, if they are over 21 and they have aces, they're not dead yet, because I can adjust those aces down from uh, 10... I'm sorry, from 11 to 1. That is, I can subtract 10 for each ace, potentially, until. Now, they might still be over, right? This is any hand in blackjack. I mean, this is just simply, again, this function is very much um, a black box. This function doesn't care about a dealer or a player. This function simply gets a collection of cards, and it tells me what the value of that collection of cards is in the game of blackjack. So it could be the dealer's hand, it could be a person's hand, it doesn't matter. It's simply getting a collection of cards and it's returning a value. Now in a case like this, That person still sunk, right? Because they have three aces and two jacks. Even if you count the aces as one, they have 23. So they're still over. But we still want to go through and we want to check to see if they're over 21 and they have aces, maybe if we reduce those aces from 11 to 1, then they're okay. Yes? What? Yeah. Person could still person could still take a hit if they have 21, right? That's that's you know. No. Well, it, well, it, why would you take a hit when you have 20, right? But but I mean, you're just giving that person the freedom to do that if they if they choose. Makes your life easier, so <laughs> so yeah, I would I would do that. 
Okay, so now all we have to do is we have to write a routine that is going to adjust for the number of aces. This routine is going to get called. I'm going to give it the value that the hand is, and I'm going to give them the number of aces. And it will adjust for the number of aces, all right, and it will return the new value for the hand. And that will become the value of the hand, the adjusted value. And that's what I return. So, now, to be sure, I took a little liberties doing shorthand here. But notice that each of my functions is only like a page written this way. Again, this, I took a little bit of a shortcut here. But the idea is that each thing does a discrete job. This is a guy that gives the value of the hand. You give it a list of cards, it's going to return the value of the hand. This is the guy that gives the value of each individual card. And then finally, the last one is going to be a method that gives the value adjusted for aces. What I call it, adjust aces. I'm going to give this two arguments. The value and the number of aces. In, yes. Adjust aces is a method, correct. Yes, this is what says that it's going to return an integer. These two things say what are the ingredients, what are the arguments to this method. So we're going to give it two integers. We're going to give it the value of the hand, and we're going to say how many aces they have. So, let's say they have, the, the value of the hand is 26, all right, and they had one ace. What's the value of the hand? Honest answer. Uh, the value of the hand is 26 and add one ace. What is the adjusted value of the hand? 16, right? What if they had, uh, what if their value of their hand was 28 and they had two aces? I think I heard you say the right answer. 18. All right. So let's. So let's say they had that. All right. So their, the value of their cards, if again, if we're counting aces at 11, that's 11, that's 17, that's 28. And they have two aces. So what's the value of that? Well, I only need to knock down one of the aces and reevaluate that as 1 instead of 10. So one of these aces is still going to be worth 11. The other one's going to be worth 1, so that's a total of 18. OK? So my adjusted value, what is it going to do? It's going to do. And you could write this a bunch of different ways. Or int i equals zero. I less than argases. I plus plus. I'm going to set a value variable, and I'm going to initialize it to the argument. Each iteration through the loop, I'm going to look and say if the value 
is greater than 21 then value equals value minus 10. So what this will do is this will subtract 10 until one of two things happens. You get below 21 or you run out of aces. All right. And in the end, we're going to return the value. So, they ran out of aces and they still have a value of 23. It's going to return a 23 and then we know that they're busted. If they have an 18 or 19, then it will return that value. Yes? This would be in the game logic. This is the rules of the game blackjack. All right. In no other card game does this rule exist to my knowledge. All right. So it would be in blackjack. Poker, this kind of stuff doesn't make sense. All right. You don't do this in poker. So let's go through this. Let's play computer and let's have these three algorithms up here. And let's flip between, between them to do a calculation. Let's do a few different cases. And I encourage you to do this. And in fact, one of these, you know, if I ever like get on a rant about like the good old days for programming, the one thing I do is talk about is back in the old days when you had to submit your programs via punch cards and the turnaround time was like measured in hours. You didn't, like, take a shot to see what would happen. You thought through your code before you ran it. Because you might only get a couple runs a day. Like, when I was going to school, I might run it in the morning, look to see if there's a problem, and then run it again in the afternoon, and then go and then get the, the, the results the following day, right? So you didn't take stabs in the dark, like, what if I change that to less than 21, you know? You thought through. And what you did is you actually played computer with a pen and paper and said, I'm going to go through this step by step and figure out what it is. So let's do a very couple of very simple couple of cases. Let's say this is my hand. Straightforward hand. What am I going to do? Evaluate hand. Says, okay, I have no aces. So, aces equals zero, value equals zero. For i equals zero, as long as i is less than a number of cards, so there's four cards, the value is going to be evaluate card, get the first card, second card, third card. And if the card's an ace, then increment aces by one. So, first card's a three. I call evaluate card. Add that value. So my value in my hand is now 3. I loop through again. I increment I. I get the second card in the list. The value of that is 6. I add that. Third card. The value is 2. Add that. The fourth card. Value is 5. I add that. I have no aces, and my hand is not greater than 21, but I don't have any aces, so I don't call the adjust aces. I simply return the value. So I would say that the value of that hand is 16. All right, let's make a more complicated one. All right. 
Initialize aces to zero. Initialize value to zero. Evaluate hand. Let's look at the first hand, or the first card in the hand. Get its value. We call this method. Get a value of seven. Our value is now seven. Look at the next card. That's an ace. Ace has a value of 11. Look at the next card that has a value of 9. Look at the next. I did how? Oh, I didn't add it. Right. Okay, so that would be 7 and 11 is 18 and 9 is 27. Okay, that's correct. All right, now the last card is also an ace. And, and, well, I also forgot to increment the number of aces. The last card is also an ace, so ace count goes up to 2, and this goes up to 38. All right? So now we're in this method. Is the value of the hand greater than 21? Yes, it is. Are there more than 0 aces? Yes, there is. So we're going to call that other method, adjust for aces, and we're going to give it the value of 38, because that's the value, and two aces. So now we're going to do our thing with this. All right. I set my value to the argument, 38. I'm going to loop through for i, as long as i is less than the number of aces, and I'm going to increment i by one each time. So, is the value greater than 21? Yes, it is. Therefore, I'm going to decrement that by 10, so we're down to 28. Go up again. Is I, is the value still greater than 21? Yes, it is, so I decrement it by 10. I've done the loop two times because I have two aces, and therefore when I'm done, I return the value, so I return that they have an 18. All right? Go ahead. No, nah, not really. It probably should be protected. All right, let's do... Let's do a couple more. Uh, what I want to do is I want to hit a couple of scenarios. I did one scenario where there were no aces at all, right? And that you, that, that you just evaluate it, and that's your answer. I did one where it's over 21, and you needed to deduct 10 for both aces. I'm going to do one now where it's over 21, and I only have to deduct for one ace. And then finally, I'm going to do one where they're busted, and they're busted no matter how many aces they have. All right? So, let's look at this. We look at the, we set aces equal to zero. We set the value equal to zero. Grab the first card, get its value. It's an ace. So we increment ace. Whoops, that should be one. And we increment the value to 11. Loop through, grab the second one. That's a seven, so our value goes to 18. And it's not an ace, so our ace count stays at 1. Third card is an ace, therefore we're up to 29. And we have two aces. All right. Now, we are greater than 21, and our count of aces is greater than 0. So we're going to call the adjust aces method. Set the value to the argument value, so the value has a value of 29. The number of aces has a value of 2. So we're going to do this loop two times. First time through the loop, is the value greater than 21? Yes, it is. Therefore, I subtract 10 from it, and I get a value of 19. I go through the loop again. Is the value still greater than 21? No, it isn't. So we don't need to subtract that second ace. 
So the value of this hand is 19. Finally, we have this hand, ace, ace, king, ten. All right? So, we initialize the value at zero. Number of aces, zero. We loop through each of the cards. Eleven, increment aces by one. That's 11, 22, increment aces by 1. 10, 10 more. So we have 42 and 2 aces. So we call our adjust aces routine. We give it a value of, what do we say? 42, and number of aces equals 2. Set the value to the argument, so value is equal to 42. We loop through. Is 42 greater than 21? Yes, it is. So we deduct 10. So we're down to 32. Go through the loop a second time, because aces equals 2. Is the value uh, greater than 21 still? Yes, it is. So we're down to 22. Now, we've gone through the loop the two times that we were supposed to, but we're still over 21. Well, person lost. You know, there's nothing more we can do for them, and therefore it would return a value of 22. Okay? This is why I'm doing this project in this manner, where we discuss it a little bit, you get to discuss it among yourselves, and then you have time to work on it. Because... If I were simply to dump this project on you, um, I, I could see where it would be very, very difficult. And it's probably difficult as it is, even though we are going through this process. But it will, you know, if, if you stick with it, believe me, we'll work through, um, we can work through individually any questions that you have with this. You know, we had the card and deck class to start. We can talk over some of the trickier routines and, and we'll get through that. Question about this. So in a nutshell, to describe the algorithm, what you do is you tally up everything, assuming aces are worth 11. You count the number of aces. You then deduct 10 until you either run out of aces or you have gotten lower than 21. Questions? Right. 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 You probably are, right? Because you want to see if they've busted. All right? So, That will add the card to it. Right. Right. So, and that, that's a good question. Let's, cons let's consider what we have going here. We're going to have some place, maybe its own class or maybe an array list. Somewhere we're going to have an array list that represents the player's hand. All right. And that's going to have an array list of cards. So let's say we have a hand class.
what are some of the methods we're going to have here? Well, one of the methods we're going to have is to add a card. And it's going to accept as an argument a card object. And it's simply going to add that card object to the array list. Now, we have our UI, which has an area for the dealer, or an area for the player, an area for the dealer. We have our hit button, our stay button, and maybe a new game button. So they press a new game, get two cards, dealer gets two cards. All right. I press the hit button. All right. What happens? Well, the deck gives up the next card. That card gets added to the player's hand. That card gets displayed over here. And the game rules is going the game rules are going to look at this to determine if the player has busted or not. All right? So another method in the game class is going to be is hand busted. So you'll have uh, is hand busted. Now that that method is going to call this method, right? Cuz what does it mean if the hand is busted? It means that the hand is greater than 21. So, the isBusted method will look at the player's hand, evaluate it. If it's greater than 21, it will say true. And at that point, you know the player's lost. If not, then the game continues and they can hit the button again or they can hit stay. All right? If they hit again, the process repeats. They get another card. It's added to the visual um, part of it. It gets added to... Um, their array list, ask if, it's bu if they're busted. If they're busted, they've lost. If they're not busted, then they can either hit again or stay. Finally, they're going to hit stay at some point, all right? Or they're going to bust, but they're going to hit stay. At that point, the dealer's rules go into effect, and the dealer hand is going to ask the game, tell me what my value is, and if my value is less than uh, 17, I'm going to ask for a hit. And if it's still less than 17, I'm going to ask for another hit. And so on until it's finally greater than 17. All right? When, and then again, each time it gets a hit, it's going to ask the rules class, did I bust? Because if it busts, then the dealer lost. Finally, if it made through, and the dealer holds and the player holds, then you evaluate both hands and compare to see you know who's closer to 21 without going over. So in a nutshell, yeah, that that's what you do for that. You'll have your game rules that will evaluate the hands really at each step. Every time the player hits hit, every time the player hits stay, and the dealer gets dealt their cards. A good intermediary step would be, in fact, I think this is what I'm asking for next week, is that you all you do is you have a hit, stay, and new game button, and you hit hit, and it goes and tells you what the value of the hand is. All right? So you don't have to play the rule. You don't even have to enforce a, have a dealer. You don't even have to enforce the rules of blackjack. But it just deals out the cards to the player and tells me, okay, you got a 10 and a 9. All right, your value is 19. You got a 6. Now your value is 25. Now you got an 8. Your value is 33 or whatever, just to get down the evaluation uh, routine for that. Questions? It seems like a lot. Do it a piece at a time. And I'm here to help you through this and 
other folks in the class are here to help you through this as well. So it seems like a big deal, but I've done this with other classes, and they all were very intimidated too. Worst case scenario, we'll take more time to get it done. I, I'm not, you know, if you're concerned about it, talk to me, because we'll, we'll, uh, we'll work through whatever you need to do. Questions? All right. All of this code? No, it's it's your job to write it. I'm I'm this part of it. I'm I'm just sort of like helping you walk through the process of writing it. The code that I actually ran and showed you on the emulator is up there. So the code to deal cards is is there, is up there in Canvas. But this code, yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm just writing it. I don't have this code available. Uh, pardon me? Yeah, I mean, it's recorded. You can, you can watch the recording of it. But yeah, the, the code itself won't be uh, up there. Other questions? All right. I have about 10 minutes left. Overlay message on screen. Whoever asked that, check out Toast. All right, check out Toast. So go home, make yourself a slice of toast and put whatever you, no, no, no. What is Toast? Toast is building classes to display just little messages and that may do what you're interested so android toast example so for example here's a very simple example where they put a toast message that says button is clicked all right. So that may do what you want it to do. Yes. This is Android specific. Yes. Android widget toast. If you want a, a dialogue with buttons, yes, you would. You would have to do that. Um, how do I want to say this? Um, yeah, I, I was just going to say, Toast very well might be good enough for your purposes if that's what you want to do. Toast is also good for debugging. For example, if you're running code and it keeps telling you that the player is losing, where it looks like the player should be winning, you know, something like that, you can actually put Toast messages to show you what the value of each hand was. And maybe, maybe you're counting tens as 15 or something silly like that. Um, there is a normal toast view and then there's a custom toast view. And custom toast view looks exactly like what the doctor ordered for that, just popping up a message on top of it. All right, so wow, we got two of these. All right, number three, the size of the card. Um, let me pull down from Canvas the code. And I'll show you specifically what I did. Even though this doesn't have Android Studio or anything, I can, we can open up the file as text files.
first thing that I did, what I had to do, is I actually put in the explicit size of the image. I think I needed to do that because, remember this is a generic card. It's not a specific card's image. All right. In other words, I didn't supply an image source for it initially. I just said, hey, I'm going to put a card here. So I think I had to do that so it knew how big the image eventually was going to be. And that's, that's the size of, of the card. Um, I, except I said uh, density independent pixels instead of pixels. So this, the cards are 71 wide, 71 pixels wide, 96 wick, pixels tall. The other thing that was important to do was this. Got to be kidding. Because WordPad, these do not have the proper carriage returns at the end, so everything looks like one line of code. Probably because of Mac. Uh -huh. And WordPad figures it out where Notepad doesn't, in a nutshell. All right, here we go. All right, the other thing I had to do, and this gets into the inflate part, is... This line here, this deals with inflate, uh, inflating it. And maybe I'll make it just a little smaller. All right. When I do an inflation, I say this is the XML file that I want to inflate. Now, from what I read when I was troubleshooting this, it is useful to tell it where it is eventually going to go. In other words, this image view eventually is going to get put into this P, hand, P handout thing which is the uh, um, linear layout for the player's hand. When you do that, it can sort of figure out where it's going to go. If you omit that, it, I don't believe it uses the XML attributes in the XML file, and it just like makes it nothing. I tried various approaches to get this to work. This was the straightforward way that did work. I set this to false because I don't immediately want to add that to that area. I'm just telling it I'm going to be adding it to that area. area. And that helps get the size right. So I'm pretty sure those two combinations of things, setting the size in the XML, and then telling it when I inflate, I want to inflate this XML, and oh yeah, here's where I'm going to be putting it. All right. Because depending on how you size it, if you say, you know, match parent or wrap content or whatever, 
all those things depend on where you're going to put it. So you have to tell it where you're going to put it for the sizing to work correct. That was the conclusion I came to at any rate. Yes? What's a what? I would assume it's a collection of views. It's just a group of views. Do you see that here in the example or? Uh-huh. Okay. Call it the Right. It's effectively, it's a destination where you're going to put it. Because, again, it's, it's a group of views, right? That linear layout isn't just going to contain one thing. It's a group of views. So, yeah, it's going to be that, that, that card XML, that image views parent. It's going to live inside of that, right? So that's the size card. Was there something specific about inflating that you wanted to look at? Okay, well, let's go over that individually. The other things, the Android error messages, the little yellow tick marks, leading zeros, inflating, and build-in methods we can talk about uh, next time. Um, unless, you know, unless, unless you, you clear them up on your own. All right. That's all I had. Anyone that wants to stick around to talk more about stuff that we didn't get to today um, or other issues, by all means, please do. I'll answer any questions, but you've got to beat me at blackjack first. No, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's part of, that's part of your... You, you need that to work. That's not, that's not for the first pass. Pardon me? Is that what it was? Is what what it was. Dealer stands on 17 or higher, yes. So if they have less than 16, they take a hit.